Brandon Lane has a warrant for aggravated assault. We haven't been able to locate him yet. But tonight, and we're gonna try to find him. Load up, round up, roll out. We think Brandon might be hiding in a relative's basement. We've smoked him out of all the other places he has to go. This is the only place that he has left to hide. We want to make sure to keep everything covert. The closer we can get to actually surrounding and cordoning off the area without the suspect even knowing we're there, and then hopefully catch him by surprise. Sheriff's office, put your hands up. Deep in the heart of the sun-kissed mountains of Appalachia lies Sullivan County, Tennessee, where some folks are quick to lend their loved ones a helping hand, even if that means evading the law. Today, Deputy Brandon Poff is headed to assist Amber Lane, a woman who alleges her dog has been stolen. It's a female, she's won her, her dog back, or I, I guess it's a ex-boyfriend that has it. But this is far more than a missing dog story. We'll find out a little bit more when we actually get to meet with the female up here. He assaulted me the other night. I guess they didn't found him, so I guess they have a worn out for him. What's his name? Brandon Anthony Lane. So do you think he's there? Brandon Lane, a man already wanted for aggravated domestic assault. According to Amber, he's staying at an elderly relative's house. Deputy Travis Jackson arrives to assist with the warrant. Who is it? I don't know. Brandon Lane. I reckon he assaulted her. That's probably what the warrant's for. She said it's his grandparents' house. Amber leads officers to the house where Brandon Lane is suspected to be hiding with the dog. Now, finding the dog is a ruse for a far greater goal, arresting a man wanted for assault. One guy here, he's gonna believe that we're just coming out for the dog. He's not gonna be expecting that police are coming with her. Hopefully, he'll be going back with us and the dog can be going with her. Jackson watches the outside of the house in case Brandon tries to escape. Hello. Hey. Is Brandon home? Oh, no, he's not here. He's been here for two or three days. OK. Person right here, she's wanting to get her dog. He's got the dog, too. You got a phone number you can call him? <laughs> no, I don't. How, how do you get in contact with him? I don't. You know his phone number, Amber? Deputy Jackson gambles that Brandon will produce the dog if Amber calls Brandon directly. Tell him the police are out with you. You want the dog, and we would like to meet up and get this taken care of. All that. Just don't mention anything about the warrant. Where are you at? Cops. I kind of got to sleep the dog over. Just tell him you're so new the dog. Nothing. Just meet me somewhere so I can come get it. We'll go ahead and let you go, but when he does call to meet or wherever, just call us back and we'll go down there. All righty. Well, thank, thank you. you. Guys. No problem. If he does come by and everything, if he's got the dog, just tell him to call us. Okay. okay. I appreciate it. As the search for Brandon Lane continues, Storm clouds begin to gather above the chilly mountains of Sullivan County. Unintentional overdose, more than drop. Sergeant Rick Rumley learns that today the rain will be the least of his worries. Caller drives it's a Blake or Christian Road, six annex, and then ran across more than drive. It's supposed to be in a khaki and camo jacket. A woman reported that her grandson had run away from his group home and swallowed a large number of prescription pills. How old is the subject? She was about me 17. She also advised that he was a runaway or trying to locate that information. 
Now possibly drugged and in danger, Sullivan County deputies must find the missing juvenile before he succumbs to an overdose. We have officers on scene looking for him. He supposedly took Xanax pills, so obviously his safety is our first concern. He supposedly took around 13 pills. A 13 or 150? Color buzzards. He took over 100. We do have the EMS in route, correct? Can't work with overdose. Within an hour, it should, the pill should hit him and slow him down or, you know, actually knock him out. You know, if he goes somewhere and hides, you know, he could basically die from it. We've set up kind of a perimeter. If he's running, he could be a couple miles away by now. As Sullivan County deputies race against the clock to save the missing youth, 70 miles away, Ash County, North Carolina, deputies at the sheriff's office are also preparing to help a family in distress. Wow. Ready? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, it won't be so bad. It's bad already. Come on. <laughs> deputies Jeremy Monday and Joe Francis are on their way to mediate a domestic incident between a couple they've encountered before. I've dealt with this couple quite a bit. I've arrested both of them. They're split up today, but they'll be back together tomorrow. It's, it's kind of aggravating. She's got some stuff in this house. She needs to get out, and she tried to come out here yesterday, and they wouldn't open the door for her or give her her stuff back. So she called us if we could do a civil standby to go with her to give her, her stuff back kind of peacefully. But this is more than a civil standby. It's an opportunity to snag a wanted fugitive. Right now, we have warrants on her boyfriend. Hopefully, he'll be here and we can get him arrested. It could turn bad pretty quick, and especially in a house like this, because you don't know who all's in it, who, who we have warrants on, who we're looking for. Deputies arrive and meet the ex-girlfriend, Tiffany Bay, at the house. Hello. Hey, good how are you? You care she gets her blown. Jason, where's he at? Uh, okay. Hey, Nolan. How you doing, bud? Got a warrant for you. Oh, uh, we'll That's fine. Let me go here with you. Make sure you got a gun or nothing. I'm angry. I got to make sure. The officers allow Jason to get dressed while Tiffany and her daughter stay out of harm's way. They're picking up. Jason Boggs because he choked me and hit me. You know what all she has here? Uh, she and her sports. She's welcome to me. Let me hold her money. He's beat her. He's choked her till she's passed out. He's sliced all four tires on her vehicle. She's lost two cars on account of him. I hope they put him in jail or throw him under it. I don't care which. As Tiffany packs up her belongings, Deputy Monday makes yet another important discovery inside. We've got drugs out here on the plate. Redbone, you got drugs in your house. This boy here last night, man. Probably left it there. What else you got in here? Let's see. You sure? It's the company you're carrying. That plate for. I don't need that, sir. I don't know what the hell's in this place, like I told you. A lot of cocaine or meth one. Ain't mine. Ain't mine. I just took mine. Hold on, man. Uh, what we found was a plate with a line of crystal meth on it, some pot seeds, alligator clips, and also a pot grinder. We're gonna get some bags to get the evidence and stuff. Then you got a old guy in there that's taking shots of vodka and chasing it with whole milk. A good way to start your morning off. Up in your china plate. <laughs> the deputies arrest Jason and take the drugs back to the station for testing. See you, Red. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. All right, well, how far is the jail?
Where we're going now is back off to the jail and, and then getting this guy processed and test the evidence, see what it is. Turn blue means positive. Test positive meth. He had it chopped out in the line, getting ready to snort. I know it. She went for a charge on me to get me locked up because I wouldn't allow her to do her dope up there where I was at. This is what dope does. It makes people think stupid things, do stupid things, and react in stupid ways. Looks like I get to stay here in nice facilities for a while. Oh, here comes boss man. Fingerprint Yeah. I'm the same person was like, who? It don't matter. We do it again tomorrow. I think he had it all. Y'all let me get my hand. Other way. Oh. Other way. That's just a man. You ain't gonna fix that mess. No, It'll be all right, dude. Just, just leave it there. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> I tried to tell you, I just got out of bed. <laughs> Back across the Murky Mountains in Sullivan County, deputies continue their race against the clock for a missing juvenile feared to have overdosed on Xanax. We've got a canine unit. We're going to do a canine track. They could have ran into the Sprint Middle Yard. That'd be good. That'd be a good start point for you there, canine. Deputy Roger Antone and his dog, Nico, have been called in to help with the hunt. Me and my canine partner, Nico, we train over 16 hours a month. The dog is a great tool to have. I'm just blessed to have a partner like him. The main thing we use these dogs for is their scent. They can smell through anything. The canine picks up on human odor. They tracks off fear odor. And the more odor that you pump off and the freshest odor that we have is the one he's going to pick up on. Down. We try to pinpoint a location where he was last seen, and at that point, we get a fair chance for the dog to get a great sniff in there, and that's when we begin to track. The more fear that the guy pumps off, the dog really alerts on that with his nose. There's a lot of dangers out here. A lot of elements, a lot of animals, especially if we're so close to the water here, the creek here. Something could have happened. He could have drowned. He could have harmed himself. This right today confirmed the cell phone number to get that for me, and also one carrier the cell phone's through. Okay. He supposedly has a cell phone on him. We'll call the phone company and see if they can ping that phone and give us a location. We'll also see if there are helicopters available if we don't have any luck here in a little bit. We'll exhaust every avenue we can. Because the worst case scenario is you might find him dead laying somewhere. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, a teenager has run away from his group home and may have overdosed on Xanax pills. A team of officers, including Sergeant Rick Rumley, scours the county for any clue of the boys' whereabouts. Turn at 5661 Highway 11E. Team 14. We have officers on scene looking for him. Meanwhile, Deputy Roger Antone and his canine partner Nico comb the area on foot. The possibility of a drug overdose leaves them with no time to spare. I just received the first information from from me about it. He's at the dead end of Island Drive. High confidence. It's a big break. Using information from the phone ping, Sergeant Rumley tightens the perimeter. The phone was last pinged in this area, so I mean he could be anywhere. Kind of like find a needle in a haystack, especially if he's in a wooded area. By now, if he really did take those pills, he's probably starting to feel those pills. Several officers involved in this manhunt and a canine tightening up the perimeter. One of our officers being up on a high ridge saw him cross the river down here. He's went south on down the river. I got 
He's to my left. The canine. He can turn the canine back. Go back down that way. 181. Walk towards me. I'm right here on the hill. I got eyes on him. He's on your offside. One of the officers have now put eyes on him, so hopefully we've got him boxed in. Sheriff's office, you need to let us know if you're here. You're not drunk. Come here. Kid could come out with a gun, knife, any type of weapon that could harm us or the dogs. Sheriff's Department, come over here and talk to me. If the suspect fails the verbal commands at that time, we do release the dog, and the dog is trained to bite the arm at that point. We're going to have to handcuff you right now until we figure out what's going on, Andy, OK? OK, we got to check you, all right? Why do you have people saying that you took them? I, I mean, I didn't have them. See, if you close your eyes, man. Open them. Close them. They're reacting instantly. You're saying you did not take any pills? We'll follow them over to the house. The runaway was in juvenile detention, living in a group home in neighboring Greene County when he escaped. EMS looked at him, doesn't have any symptoms as a possible overdose. Before the juvenile is transferred to the Department of Child Services, the officers take him to his grandmother's house so they can finally be reunited. He's run away from Greene County. I'm telling you, you don't know how much I've prayed about this. He scares me. I, I just, he needs help. When I spoke to the juvenile, the main reason for him taking the prescription medication was he's having problems with family. He was having problems with his girlfriend at the time. We were able to talk to him and calm him down and let him know that things are going to work out with him. And there's other ways to do things. How did you get out to start with? It's probably not a lockdown facility. His grandmother said he run after four days. <laughs> Don't cry. Oh, baby, I love you. Honey, please, please let them help you. Okay, you can do this. You're a grown up. Okay? You think about what you're doing. Yeah. You're messing up. I'm not, I'll be there for you. Unfortunately, he is in state custody, so we'll deal with that part. This is one of those instances that, you know, it works out good. I mean, you, you locate the juvenile, come to find out he wasn't on the pills, we don't have to take him to the hospital, and all the guys doing a great job is just awesome. Back out on patrol, Sullivan County deputies Poff and Jackson continued their search for Brandon Lane. The missing fugitive is accused of assaulting his estranged wife, Amber, and stealing her dog. What started as a domestic disturbance has now grown into a full-blown manhunt. The deputies have just received a tip as to Brandon's whereabouts. Officer Jackson just now got off the phone with Amber Lane. Uh, she called back and said he's coming to meet her on 11W. The deputies have set a trap for the fugitive. When Brandon Lane goes to meet his wife, the deputies will be there waiting to arrest him. I kind of play it smart because if he sees us, you know, sitting anywhere near, he's going to know that we're there for him. The last time we planned like this, the subject ran. The deputies hide themselves across the street from the meeting place. She said he's going to be in a white Honda. She said that he's about five minutes out. You know what he looks like? Deputy Jackson calls Amber with final instructions for her rendezvous with Brandon. Uh, so if you, if you see him pull in or you see him come in or something, just you don't even have to uh, say anything on the phone. You just 
tell your phone to call, and if, if I answer and you don't say anything, we'll just roll them in there. Deputy Poff believes their suspect has arrived. There's a Honda Center across from where they're supposed to be meeting that. And that could very well be them. The trap has been set, and Brandon Lane may have walked right into it. Sullivan County deputies Jackson and Poff are on a stakeout for fugitive Brandon Lane, a man accused of stealing a dog from his estranged wife. He's also wanted for assault. The wanted man supposedly drives a Honda and may have just driven right into a trap set by deputies. There's a Honda sitting across from where they're supposed to be meeting that with two uh, subjects in it. We can't tell from here if it's him or not. Uncertain if Brandon is in the car, Jackson contacts the man's wife, Amber, while Poff keeps a watchful eye on the vehicle. So do you believe he was coming down here? Or... She's saying that he's kind of fearful that she might be setting him up. It turns out the person in the Honda is not their man. However, Amber gives Jackson a tip that he may be staying with family at a nearby apartment complex. As the officers arrive at the new location, Jackson immediately recognizes Brandon's elderly relative, whom they had previously met. What you doing here? I brought some stuff over here for my granddaughter. Ah. The granddaughter lives here at the complex, where Brandon is believed to be staying. You hadn't heard from Brandon? No. So no right. So he don't he don't ever come around or anything? It's probably been about a week since I've seen him. I don't know how close y'all are with him, his family, but if he wants to make things right, yeah, he needs to call us. Is he under arrest? He's he apparently she's reporting the dog stolen. Well see, is, the is dog is his. Mm-hmm. If he wanted to tell me that, that would be fine. But he refused to do that. Deputies are secretly planning to draw Brandon out then arrest him for assault. But they don't want to tip off the family. The family is going to do anything for them. They'll give us misinformation, hiding each other out from the law. In our area, blood runs thicker than water. They search the apartment under the pretense of settling the dog dispute, but leave empty-handed. It's pointless to continue to run. You're going to face these charges, be it now or be it later. Seventy miles across the Blue Ridge Mountains in Ashe County, North Carolina, autumn has left its mark on the region. The leaves fall and accumulate into piles throughout the area. But when the wind kicks up, it doesn't take much for something beautiful to ignite into something deadly. wildfire flares up in the mountains. We got a call of a brush fire where the wind's blowing and gusts up here right now. It got out of control. Ash County Deputy Chris Roten races toward the flames. One thing about Ash County, we do have a lot of wooded area. This time of year when you get the leaves dried out, easy to catch fire. When you mix that with the wind that we're having tonight, it can spread very quickly. Down below in the valley, homes are being threatened. There's homes throughout those wooded areas. We need to start evacuating people out of the residences here. I want you to go home. Get out of here, because we're going to be here a long time. Over two dozen firefighters from five departments respond to the call. Deputy Roten joins the battle as the flames continue to taunt the team of rescuers. Looks like it is picking up a little bit more. Seeing all the houses around, I want to see the fire out. 
I don't want to see anybody lose their home. We got a brush fire where the wind's blowing in gusts up here right now. It got out of control. I'll just tell to get up with you. Tell me what you need me to do, all right? In the mountains of Ash County, North Carolina, Deputy Chris Roten is helping firefighters battle a raging wildfire that's threatening at least 50 homes. You need to get the fire stopped so it doesn't get that house or this house. We need to start evacuating the residences here. Breathing in that smoke, it burns your lungs. We've got these firemen. They do this stuff as volunteer. I thank God above for them. Finally, the Ash County rescuers gain the upper hand against the flames. All the firemen done a great job and kept the structures up there from getting damaged. Is that him there? They do that for free. Thank goodness nobody was hurt there in the incident. Done the best job I could do in helping the firemen, getting it under control, save property, save lives. After successfully putting out the blaze, these volunteer firefighters return home for the night. Until the next time. Back over in Sullivan County, deputies Jackson and Puff are responding to a hot lead in their manhunt for the wanted fugitive, Brandon Lane. Officers learned that Brandon just returned the dog he took from his estranged wife, Amber, and is believed to be hiding at a girlfriend's house in this apartment complex. Amber's been reunited with her puppy. He had called her and told her that he left the puppy at his girlfriend's house. Deputies are familiar with this apartment complex. It's one of the places Brandon is known to hide. They surround the girlfriend's apartment. If he's here, there will be no escape. Come to the door. We'll go around the building, make sure there ain't nothing else. We'll try a couple different routes. Jackson checks the windows around back and meets one of the neighbors. The last time you saw her was yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And, and he was here yesterday. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then the police came and knocked on the door, yeah. and he wouldn't come out. Neither one of them would answer the door, and they were both there. I'm going to try to make contact with her by phone. The, one of the neighbors give us her telephone number, and hopefully we can work this out. The phone is answered by none other than the man they've been hunting, Brandon Lane. Jackson poses as a friend of the neighbor. That's a friend of Ashley's. I, I know she knows Ashley. That's why cops are up here at Haley's. I'm just looking out. I was told to call you and tell you. I don't know. There's a handful of them. Where you at? All right, well, that's all we need. And who was you talking to? It was him saying he's a So if we can rush over there and find a car leaving real quick. Armed with information from the fugitive himself, Jackson and his team race to the complex where they believe he's hiding. Usually when they think the police are on their heels and they're not going to bed down one location, they're going to try to move, and especially after they already told us where they were. They arrive under the cloak of darkness and close in on their man. They don't have an exact address, but know the fugitive is close by. Come on in. <laughs> we was that, looking for a Brandon uh, Lane. It could be upstairs. They're big. Through the course of you know, going from apartment to apartment, we're narrowing it down. Y'all know him? Sheriff's office. What do I do? Each apartment we go to, it's one less apartment away. <laughs> you know your upstairs neighbor? Their search comes up empty. Brandon Lane seems to have eluded officers once again. 
We didn't get him today. Hopefully, we're going to get him tomorrow. But either way, we will get him. As the manhunt continues in Sullivan County, across the Blue Ridge Mountains in Ash County, deputies Jeremy Monday and Joe Francis begin a hunt of their own for a potentially dangerous suspect. Just got a call from two detectives that does their sex crimes. They said that they're fixing to take warrants out on a guy that's had sex with a child. He's probably going to try to run or hide or something. Uh, me and Deputy Francis are on our way out here to this address where he possibly could be or where he's been at. We're going to go try to pick this guy up and get him arrested, get him in jail. Monday thinks he recognizes the suspect's car passing the other way. Past the vehicle that well, we just passed the vehicle that matched the description that they give us. So now it's turned around real quick to try to see if I can catch up with it. If we can catch him out here like this, that would be our best bet. Hopefully we can. There, I've seen him. Point one, you have to be on Yeah, that's him. Point 20, okay. I'm going to be 1061, pair of jokes. Deputies Jeremy Monday and Joe Francis believe they have caught a suspected child rapist. Hey, you got an ID on you? Come on now. Got anything on you? No. Oh. Hey, yeah, I oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Come put your hands behind your back. Again? Catching him beside the roads, best case scenario. He's out of his element, kind of be able to control him. And also, too, it's a lot harder to hide when you're behind the steering wheel. Thank you for not picking me up when my daughter was here. Deputy Monday reads multiple charges levied against the suspect. Uh, this one here is rape of a child. Here's also another sexual offense with a child. If convicted, that uh, two of those is a life sentence and three of those is 20 years each. Yeah, it's always real good to catch somebody child rape. I think that's the worst crime you could do. That's best if every one of them was locked up or disposed of. Back over in Sullivan County, the manhunt for Brandon Lane continues. Out on patrol, Deputy Richard Lingerfeld spots a fugitive of the four-legged kind. Driving down the road, out in the country, is something that you see more times than not. Okay. Loose uh, cattle, horses. We can find out where we can turn the fence down and we just kind of like herd her back in, she'll probably go in pretty easy. Not sure if his fence has got juice on it or not. Hold up, because it's got juice on it. It's got juice. Herding a cow is a two-man job. Deputy Lingerfelt searches for an opening in the fence, while his partner, Deputy Chris Thomas, prepares to corral the cow inside. I get her stern, I get her stern. We got this. Oh. <laughs> really, Thomas? I told you you're going to move your car. 
you gonna have to leave your car up there and block that off so when he comes up here, we're gonna guide it in. She's mean. She ain't mean. She come back here. She ain't mean. As I bring her up, open that gate right there in the corner. Get through her. Come on now. Get her. Open that gate, Thomas. Yep. 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 Now you have to run her in there. Don't let her pass your car. There you go. Get her. While one fugitive has been apprehended, elsewhere in Sullivan County, another is still on the run. The manhunt for a suspect wanted on assault charges continues. Deputies Jackson and Poff know that Brandon Lane has been staying under the protection of friends and family. We were over in this area on graveyards looking for Brandon Lane. By showing up here, officers are sending a message that his hideouts are no longer safe. The deputy's strategy is to keep Brandon on the move, leaving him with few places to hide. Do y'all know your upstairs neighbors by chance? I've never seen them or anything. Mm -hmm. I think we just missed him. Deputies believe that Brandon Lane has only one place left to hide. If he's staying in the basement of his grandfather's house, if that's true, then that'll keep him there since we haven't been back to the grandparents' house. So we can go back there and that'll keep him contained. Waiting for the cover of darkness, Jackson and his team prepare to launch a surprise raid. They believe they have cornered Lane into his last remaining family hideout. In this instance, the safe house is more than likely gonna be his grandparents' house. So tonight we figured we would hit the grandparents' house and see if we could locate him there. So we'll be coming from this way. And the problem is, as you can see, there's nowhere to pull. Cause if you get right here on these two roads, it's, I mean, they can, you're already seen. You're seen. So the best thing to do is just to roll in here and just drive on down and get in there quickly. All right, Alrighty. load up, round up, roll out. We want to make sure to keep everything covert, go in with as less lights as we can. The closer we can get to actually surrounding and cordoning off the area without the suspect even knowing we're there, that's the better. So that's how we're going to do it tonight. In Sullivan County, after a three-week-long manhunt, Deputy Travis Jackson thinks they are finally closing in on their suspect. We've been going to several different areas looking for Brandon Lane. If you cut off avenues where they're staying at and they can't stay here or here, then they're gonna stay somewhere else. So that's what we've been doing, is just cutting off different areas and forcing him into a location where he feels safe. Having shown up earlier at his other hideouts, deputies believe they finally have Lane trapped at his relative's house. Now they saw us pull in. Saw her standing in the window. Yeah, 
for taking that long, he's probably here. Let's see if he can make contact. I'm gonna look around. They're not wanting to come to the door. But I know there's somebody inside. There's one standing at the window when we pulled in. Watching us. Uh... Hey, you got neighbor just peeked out over here. Jackson goes to talk with the neighbors. Hello. Hey. Are y'all y'all related to these people over here? Mom and dad's house. Ah. Uh, the neighbor is another one of Brandon's relatives. My dad should be there. It's his car. Not answering the door. Yeah, not answering the door. Who you looking for, Brandon? Brandon, yeah. He's probably there. Our ultimate goal here is to arrest Brandon. Everybody domestic? Yeah. Y'all don't have a key or anything over here? Yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Don't you damn guys won't ever stop coming down here. I wish we could. As soon as we find Brandon, we will. Is he here? No. Did you talk to him and tell him what I told you to tell him? No, I didn't. But see, now I know you're lying to me. I know you have. I know for a fact you have. How do you know? I know. You call me a damn boy. I am. Because I know. Let's go ahead and look and make sure he's not here. Yeah, and then, let's go look around and make sure can, he ain't here. Then we can talk about the rest of it. I'm coming here behind you, Papa. Grandfather is focused on one of the first bedrooms to your left. Whose room is that? No, this one he's just in. My wife's son. Whose room is this? Uh -huh. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Get up. We're not asking you to get. Get back or you're going to jail too for telling us he wasn't here. Well, you might go to jail anyway. He was asleep. He didn't know I was here. It don't care. We don't do very well with people that help people hide from us. Will you come give me one of them bomb me out, please? He might be in there with you. Yeah. I ain't made my mind up yet. Yeah, we're going to discuss that. I'm going to call you. Peppa, no, no. Peppa, you can get in trouble. I'll give you the number. Peppa, stop or they're going to take you to jail. Stop. You'd I didn't buy them in their truck. Taking Brandon into custody, he was trying to tell us that the grandfather had no idea that he was in there, which we know to not be true. With it being family, we understand that. We take that into consideration, too. Even though we had enough to take the grandfather into custody for harboring a fugitive, we didn't feel that that was the best course of action. So in the end, Amber's got her dog back and Brandon's going to face justice. We're gonna find you. It's just a matter of time. As always, justice has been served. I just wanna tell my wife that I love her. Sorry for the trouble that ended up getting me in. Makes you feel great when you can sign your name to a couple week long investigation.